Welcome to another episode of Tales from a Professional Nerd. My name is Brian C.P. Steele. I will be your nerd today and every day that you watch my show. Uh, so today is going to be a special day. Um, I'm going to be real, I'm trying to do real fast on the Weekend Brian um, and uh, showing off the uh, Armor Class t-shirt of the week uh, because I want to spend a lot of time over in the Hobby Rig today. Uh, because today's episode is uh, make your hobby fun. Make make hobby time fun time. Um, it's too easy. Uh, as as uh, uh, I'm about ready to get into. Um, so okay, uh, I've been very busy lately. I've been swamped. <laughs> uh, it's been insane in a great way. Uh, but uh, because, you know, Adepticon is right around the corner, GaryCon is right around the corner, um, I'm helping out some uh, some clients get their stuff ready for Adepticon, uh, I am getting my own games and things and characters and packages and sessions and everything ready for uh, for uh, GaryCon. Today we're going to be working on the uh, the charity uh, GaryCon Frost, or Thunder Frost Dragon piece, an awesome, awesome piece by John Popson and, uh, F and Cool Miniatures, which I'll put a, uh, a link to them, they're fantastic, John, good job, man, um, but we're gonna, we'll, we're gonna take a look at, uh, getting, getting that started, because, um, you know, these things, they creep up on us, and today, it occurred to me, uh, you know, that I've got all these things that I've got to do, uh, before I can go to these shows, uh, my wife is in the same boat. She's doing a charity piece for the Jerry, uh, the, the Jerry con, <laughs> the Gary con auction. Um, she's going to horror hound next weekend on her own to, uh, get some, some of her charity pieces signed. I'm bringing, uh, Satine, uh, a piece for her to sign for the charity auction. Um, I mean, like it's, it's a lot of, it's just a lot going on when you are, uh, when you when you're a freelancer when you're a, a professional in the, in the industry you've got a lot that you've got to do and it's real easy for your um, for your fun times the things that you normally love that make your heart swell with happiness it's real easy to have that turn into a oh, I've got to do this and I wanted to I wanted to kind of take a day um where uh i can kind of explain that a good worker a good freelancer a good industry professional finds a way to make that a nice balance uh, which ties in perfectly with uh the armor class 10 uh, our sponsor uh the armor class 10 t-shirt of the week um that uh it goes it goes hand in hand perfectly uh, so, Armor Class 10 carries a, a handful of shirts from my very, very good buddy, and uh, I, I would call him an industry angel, um, Dave Taylor. Uh, Dave Taylor has been in the industry for ever, <laughs> for as long as there's been the industry. No, he's not that old. Um, but he really has, he has been involved with Games Workshop, he's been involved with Battlefront, he's been involved with... You know, War Games Illustrated. He's been, he's he is one of those people that um, professionally I look up to uh, because he he has managed to you know be a husband, a father, a friend, uh, and a professional for decades, and he's made it work. And I really do um, not only appreciate that as a uh, as a as a talent but um i hope to emulate that in my own life uh as as i move forward and i i really do um i appreciate everything that dave has done for me i had a chance to work with dave um for several years at uh, at simon while well, he was a, a consultant at simon and i was the the i was a staffer there um he was one of the big reasons why i had the the wherewithal to turn Dark Age into the game that it became uh, was a lot. A lot of that had to do with uh, with with Dave Taylor, and um, he has since like gone forward and you know really 
taken off on his own. He's put out a couple. He kickstarted a couple of different things. He's put out a book, uh, a mini, a, a book about miniature painting and, and building scenarios and th or, uh, building dioramas and things. Um, that is uh, amazing. Uh, if you get a chance to check it out, I'll, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna put uh, Dave uh, Dave's information in the uh, in the description. Um, but uh, basically, D Dave Taylor's amazing, and uh, I know he watches this sometimes. Uh, so uh, I hope you're all red faced and embarrassed and you know doing the whole ah oh, shut up Brian in your Australian way. Um, but uh, I, I really do mean it. Uh, and if you if you are out there listening, uh, I, I love you. Uh, not enough not enough you know guys say that to each other. Um, just in general, and uh, he Dave, you've left a hell of a mark on the industry. And uh, you've definitely left a hell of a mark on me. And uh, when I saw over at our friends at Armor Class 10 to get back on track, that they were carrying your t-shirts, the Dave Taylor Dave Taylor miniatures uh, uh, t-shirts. So this is something that Dave stands by. This is one of his little mantras: make your painting a habit, not a chore. Uh, and that is kind of my my thought for today is when I opened up my armor armor 10 box and I got and I saw that this t-shirt was in there and it kind of fell in with the fact that I've been so stressed and just you know so swamped and my kids have even said you know dad you haven't really had a lot of time to play games with us and it occurs to me that you know maybe I'm biting off a lot more than I can chew but I have to be able to support my family I have to be able to move forward but it doesn't mean that I have to be a jerk about it. Uh, that I have to look at it as, oh, God, another day of making games. Another day of painting miniatures for other people for money. You know, there are people out there. There are there are people that work, you know, work grindy jobs nine to five, you know, uh, sometimes worth shit, worse shifts than that. Uh, and... I look at it and yeah, I don't sleep as much as I should, and yeah, I'm not in the best health as as I am, or as I, as I'd like to be. I'm definitely pudgier than I than I have been in in many 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 moons. But at the end of the day, I make games and toys for a living, and I have to remind myself that I have to remember that that. I can't bitch about my job. I love my job. Uh, there are so many people out there that work, that work, just thankless, horrible hours, grueling conditions, and I I have to remind myself that yeah, it's all relative. I can have a bad day. I'm allowed to have a bad day, but my bad day is dramatically less impacting than say a bad day for a fireman or a bad day for the guy who is working at urgent care right now oh god which brings us to a whole other topic um so right around the corner we've got uh gary connor at the this last weekend uh was gamma in reno and gamma uh, for those people who don't know is a uh uh, uh, a game game makers association, uh, a trade expo. Basically, it's a it's a place where retailers, distributors, game makers can all go. Uh, but it's not for the open masses. You can't just like wander up to Gamma and be like, "Hey, what's up, Gamma?" You know, like it doesn't work that way. You have to you have to be a member of the industry to get into these shows, and it gives you a chance to sneak preview things for the next year or. Uh, you know, it, it, the shops run around and ask these game people, hey, why should I carry your product? Or vice versa. You know, I, I plan to hopefully go next year, uh, probably with either Crafty or Big Child, um, to try and peddle our new stuff. Um, but uh, this year, the reason I'm bringing it up is... Um, Gamma's a very big international event. You know, there's, there's people that come from all over the place. And they... Uh, they had to cancel a ton of, of, of individual events and seminars and things because people couldn't make it because of this whole 
uh, uh, COVID coronavirus thing. Um, and, uh, you know, just as of last night, uh, uh, the Trumpster, uh, which I refuse to ever use his name as the, uh, as the title that he stole. Okay. I don't get, pol I don't get political, but okay. Um, he was on TV last night talking about how, um, they're closing down, uh, uh travel, hopefully temporarily, to uh, to Europe, to and from Europe, uh, because of this uh, this situation, and there are several states that have put out like you know no gatherings more than a hundred people. You know, like it's it's turned into a kind of a nasty thing, and you know I'm sure there's going to be people that hear that and go, ugh, you know, just don't sneeze in each other's face. You know, don't lick doorknobs. I'm in that same boat. I do believe if you have good hygiene, wash your wash your freaking hands. Um, you know, don't sneeze on each other. Close your mouth when you when you're when you're chewing. You know, just like just just general good hygiene stuff. And this thing should not affect the majority of people in these shows and these Americans. But you never know. You always there's always that one person that you see that you're like, I can't believe that you're a grown up. You know, I can't, I can't believe that you are. You, what did did I literally just see you picking your teeth and now you're fishing through the salad bar? Gross. You know, like that's how this stuff happens. And so what's happened is that there are a lot of places that are kind of forcing conventions can for and, and this is the prime of convention season. Um they're forcing them to shut down or or at least postpone. But knowing how much goes into setting up a convention and making a convention happen. I don't know, you know, if some, if some of these get postponed, it's pretty much a cancellation until next year. Um, so uh, I know right now the goal is to go to a day at Adepticon and GaryCon next week. You know, my wife goes to Horror Con, or in two, in two weeks, my wife's going to go to Horror Hound next week. You know, that's the that's the plan. But if this whole virus thing gets, gets out of hand and gets worse and the states step in and we're like, hey, you guys got to shut it down, I don't... You know, thing, things will change. Things will definitely change um, on my schedule. But as it is right now, I got to still plan and push as if these things are going to happen because the management of these shows say they're going to do everything they can to make them happen. And part of that reason, and I'm not, I know I'm going long. I said I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna go on, and I'll stop real soon so we can get over to the hobby rig. But part of the reason why these management these managers don't want their shows to get canceled is because there's a huge cost that goes into these shows, especially this close to where the show is. There's a lot of dated materials. There's a lot of uh, non-refundables that they can't, they, that, you know, if, if the state shuts them down, what are they going to do? You know, be like, Hey, sorry. I, I wish I could get money back from my, you know, how many, how many, you know, awesome 3D medallion, you know, awards that say Adepticon 2020, uh, did Adepticon make, you know, how many swag bags did they fill? How much, how much literature did they print? You know, like these are all costs that they're not going to be able to get back if the show doesn't happen. And it's from a, from a, a show goer from us, we look at it and go, God, I hope we get our money back if the if the show doesn't happen. But then I have to think, if we don't get if if we get our money back, that is such a huge chunk of change that comes out of their pocket, and the rest is just loss. So, I guess I take it take it for for a situation that this is really this is weird and unique. You know, as far as I know. I've never, in my whole time in the industry, I've never had a situation where the state has shut down uh, entire conventions before. And uh, so we'll, we're going to have to kind of walk through this and then kind of tiptoe through the, through the tulips and see what's up. Uh, because for all I know, uh, they may very well not, be able to refund money for hotels and things. I, I really have no idea. This is this is kind of blind territory. So uh, that was that's basically what I wanted to kind of focus on this today is just getting some painting done, showing that you can have a good time and still cross things off of your requirement list. Um, I'm big on lists. Um, 
but then uh, also I wanted to kind of you know talk a little bit about uh, what happens if these shows don't don't go. Um, but yeah, so oh, real quick uh, because I did you know the the topic today is make you know make hobby time fun. I have still. Uh, even though I've been painting a ton for for other people, a lot of a lot of commission based stuff, working a many many long nights at the computer, you know, on uh, on you know the sci fi project that can't be named yet, uh, and the uh, uh, you know crafty games things and big child stuff, and you know I'm all over the place with that. Um, I have had a chance to make sure that while I'm painting, while I'm over there in the hobby rig, that I have had um, some time. To paint some stuff for myself. Uh, so just a couple weeks ago, the B2 Super Battle Droids came out for Star Wars Legion. I've been waiting for these guys pretty much since the the first run. Um, and just like with the uh, the B1s, uh, with their specialists, I went on to my copy of EA, EA Sports Battlefront 2 and found what the markings are on specialists and leaders and things for the different squads um, and painted my uh, painted all my all my robots uh, to have all the, the markings they're supposed to have so at a glance they they are you know canon specific it's silly and it's an extra thing but it, it also does break up the monotony of having you know here are a dozen you know two dozen of the exact same paint job uh, but then I also did have a chance to paint my thundercracker. Uh, technically, he was a sky, uh, a star scream, uh, a, a star scream sculpt. But I did some cutting and hacking and ripping and tearing. Um, added his little ion bombs on the back uh, because uh, I'm gonna do all three of the seekers for my uh, unofficial Transformers miniature game. Um, still haven't had a chance to get Starscream or Skywarp done, but, uh, they, they are, once I get past this big Gary Con bubble, uh, you know, get all the stuff that, that's done, you know, the, the stuff I'm painting for Adepticon, and, and once I get all that stuff done, um, my, uh, and now this is my Legion stuff's caught up until the, the new stuff comes out, uh, my next uh, kind of thing for myself is to get those two Seekers done um, and then I think I'm going to dive in and maybe start painting my Dust Minis um, just because I have been doing a lot of dust, mi dust painting for a client and uh, I'm really enjoying the, the, the paint the, or the, the process that goes into some of those models so I'm hoping to jump into that here pretty soon uh, plus of course commission work as it comes in blah 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 but uh, I just wanted to show you that I am practicing what I preach, and I am still painting things for fun and for my own kind of yay process, uh, even though I am still spending you know 12 to 14 hours a day working on work stuff uh, because it's, I'm in a really busy mode, but in the end, everything will work out, and I will still be smiling, and I will still be making cool things for us. In fact, let's go cross something off my list right now over or at least start to in the hobby zone we will see you in just a second so here we are in the hobby rig uh i just wanted to uh real quick before we'll dive in because i'm gonna try and get if everything goes well i'm gonna try and get this whole thing at least base coated um and discuss kind of the the, the theory behind it uh but today we are doing the uh thunder frost dragon from Gary Con 12, the uh, special special edition, super crazy limited uh, model for this year. Um, it goes along with a, a like a limited edition uh, adventure that they've written for the for this year. So this, it should be a lot of fun. Um, let's go ahead and queue up the actual hobby cam, and if I do this right. I did it right. Cool. All right. So yeah. So it comes with. I've got it on this little piece of plastic card. So it's got the Gary Con Twelve. Let's see if we can get you to see it a little better outside of the glare. A little Gary Con Twelve. Uh, it comes with these adorable little dragon eggs. Little nestle in here into the inside. Uh, one of them being these little. He's hatching. It's coming out. 
Uh, so I'm gonna get a chance to do some uh, some yolk goo when I uh, when I get a chance to get to, get rid of those. But primarily this morning or this afternoon, what we're doing is we are going to be doing the actual Thunder Frost Dragon itself. So uh, this is done by uh, John Popson at Effing Cool Miniatures. Um, it's a great kit. Like it looks exact. It looks just like the uh, the art. Um, if I can find a picture of the art, I'll put it up. Uh, it looks just like the art from the uh, from the the cover of the uh, uh, the cover of the adventure. Um, but it is uh, uh, it's big. It's a hefty piece. This is this is definitely bigger than last year's. Last year's diorama that we did was about a fifty cent piece and had like a couple of little figures on it. Um, but yeah, so like I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about this. This is gonna be a lot of fun. So it's a Thunder Frost Dragon, and in the picture, uh it looks like it's kind of like a if a white dragon and a blue dragon had kind of a misbegotten child. So because of that, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna start I am gonna go ahead and start off uh so color theory. Let's talk a little bit of color theory. Um, there's really two uh, two branches of white. Uh, there's cool whites and there are warm whites. Uh, warm whites are going to be base toned in things like uh, tan and brown and yellow. Uh, you're going to have um, I talk while <laughs> do your stuff while you talk. Um, you're going to have. Uh, uh, a, a, a kind of a deeper undertone, or a, like a like a, a lighter undertone. It'll look very, um, I don't know, for lack of a better term, very 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 light, living and uh, breathing, and it will be very autumnish. Um, but then you go up from there using different shades of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, different shades of. Um, like yellow and orange and tan, and you bring yourself up to through peach, through taupe, through, and eventually you get up to the actual whites themselves, uh, and like the ivories and the whites, and you will have a completely different, a completely different look is if you do a cold branch white. Um, I actually, generally speaking, I prefer cold branch whites, um, and it, cold branch whites start with like deep gray, blue, and work that you know through the through the gray rather than the ivory spectrum up until the until you get to that bright white. Um, so you are going to see initially you're going to be like, what the heck? All right, you know what? I'm going to move this over because I I lean a little to one side. And it, nope, that's not the right one. Uh, let's I'm gonna move this over here. And let's put it. Right there, perfect. All right, because I, I I tend to lean forward a little bit, and I don't want to I don't want to get in my own way, which tends to happen when I do these. Um, so you're gonna look at this, and you're gonna see that I'm really kind of starting a, a much darker blue for this critter to be is end up gonna be white. Um, I'm starting. There's gonna be multiple layers of white, uh, plus even a Vallejo whitewash at one point. Um, I love the Vallejo white ink. Uh, I love using it for like graying hair. I think it, it does just the perfect amount of uh, like white shadow. Does that make any sense? Like like deep like like a not really a highlight highlight. I don't know. It's weird stuff, but I love it. I bought it a long time ago uh, to help me build up decent uh, decent snow. On bases, like to highlight stuff as if it looks like it was frozen, uh, which I'll probably do on this base as well. But the end result was I just really kind of fell in love with this stuff, um, and so I've maintained its use through many, many moons. Uh, now, something that you'll probably notice, <laughs> or you should notice anyway, is that I'm doing this in pieces. Um, I generally, uh, for most people that have seen me paint, or and they'll ask. You know, do you assemble before you paint, or do you paint and then assemble? I have always been a 
assemble than paint kind of guy. Um, I don't know why that is. It's just maybe like it's one step and, you know, I would hate for the chemicals and the glues to mess with my paint schemes or whatever the case may be. But it is, it's just, it's just how I've been. And I've always been that way. In this instance, I tried to get it assembled beforehand, but those little eggs, those little dudes, of course I point to the eggs when you can't see them. <laughs> Brian, uh, you know, those little eggs are, are going to be a lot of fun and a neat little facet on the diorama. So I don't want to lose out on, on, on being able to do those. So because of that, I, that, and this, this underbelly under here would be really difficult to get to. It's so thickly segmented, like it's got deep shelves on these scales. Uh, it would be really difficult to get at very well, um, in, uh, uh, if it was on that base, because that base is so wide, and this is it's so it's so deep in that 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 pocket. There's just it would be no way I'd be able to get everything, and especially you know this was for my own collection. You know I could probably overlook a couple of mistakes here and there, but the fact that this is for charity, um, and that this is supposed to be auctioned off to hopefully you know somebody who will look at it and put it on their shelf and you know. In, in, for, for future future awesomeness the fact that that's this I would not even remotely want this to be you know where I cut corners and you know well no one's gonna see it because if, if they would and it came back around that way that would kill me that would make me insane so not gonna happen all right so let's see I've already done the underbelly scales in this this bright blue I think we are gonna have that same, pretty much anything that's going to be made out of that, that hard, you know, kind of carrot and chitin is going to have, start with that same blue. Uh, I don't think I want to do the back scales, like the actual like spinal ridge. Um, I think those are going to be, that's going to be start more on the white end because I have a very cool idea that I want to do. I'm definitely going to do it with the eggshells. But I think I kind of want to do it with that spine um, and probably the horns uh, is I've got some color shift paints from Turbo uh, Turbo Dork. Uh, shout hats out or shout, shout out to Turbo Dork. You guys sent me some cool stuff to use. Um, I, uh, I definitely want to, to use some of that um, because I think it'll be particularly a, a neat way of adding like that kind of uh, shimmering electric sparkle that the thunder part of the thunder frost dragon is supposed to have um so yeah i think we'll, we'll go that route on like the down that spinal ridge i believe and then on the eggshells themselves uh, i'll probably do a thicker version on the eggshells because you know it's they're supposed to be protecting them or whatnot um all right I don't want to do the rocks on, under the feet just yet because I'm not completely sure what color I'm going to be doing the actual base itself. Um, I know it's up on a frozenish mountain, but there are still trees and things, so I might do it in a kind of a brown, sort of a brown with patches of snow. Uh, a motif because I think that that might actually help the the eggs and the the dragon itself really stand out. I don't want it to get washed out in the the rest of the the rest of the base. So this is one of the things that that I I, I think a lot of people will a lot of a lot of painters, especially early on painters, they won't think about the 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 basing part of what they're doing. You know, it, it'll be, oh, well, I'll throw some grass on it at the end. Or, you know, one of my best buddies, I uh, miss him to death. I don't see him very often. Um, he, for the longest time, I mean, this is, this is decades ago at this point. For the longest time, he would not finish his bases. He would just paint them goblin green, old GW color, 
and call it good. And it was infuriating because he was an amazing painter, uh, which is actually tragic that he doesn't really paint anymore. But he was an amazing painter. And when he uh, when he did his his models, there's these striking, gorgeous, gorgeous figures. And then you look down past their feet, and there's just just blight. There's bright green, this puke goblin green, flat base, no grass, no no highlighting, no shading, just like you were doing a color test on a on a, uh, a like a swatch for a for a house. Ah, it was so infuriating because he was such a, an amazing painter. I learned so much from him over the oh, I got my hand all covered in blue. Uh I learned so much from him over the years. Uh and the the fact that uh <laughs> that he, he would just I remember us going round and round and round and round and round that he would be like, well, the base isn't part of the model. It shouldn't matter. And I remember us going to some tournament somewhere uh, or, or some game store somewhere that had a painting contest and it showed the points that you get. Like it was basically, it was like, all right, you get 10 points for this, five points for this, five points for this. If you If you have this, you get five points for this. And one of the things that was on there that was in that uh, uh, the, the categories of things you get scored on was a, uh, a flocked and detailed base. And he got very upset at first until you looked at the models. And you actually saw them in the case and, and like watched them. You like kind of look, look down the row and you go, what, what makes these stand out over these? And that, it really did show him. It showed to him, okay, yeah, maybe uh, maybe I need to start flocking my models. And, of course, you know, we all start off with just, you know, Elmer's glue and some sponge flock. And then eventually move into static grass and maybe some mud and water effects and, you know, things of the sort. But, uh, you know, well... To give you an idea, I actually just finished. I, I said I wasn't going to do this. I wasn't going to tangent, but I just finished. I got to finish basing him. I finished putting some uh, some water effects on. I don't want the water effects to spill. Um, a greater avatar of Cthulhu for dust for a client. Uh, turned out really good. I'm really, really happy with him. Um, but yeah, check him out. I'm so angry, but I, I built up some some parts of the base because it's a big flat base, and I know that the the client wants just sand on the base, but with something that big, and it comes with the sculpted rock that he's standing on, uh, just having like a pile of sand at his feet seems really lame. So I went ahead and uh, changed it up and did some. Uh, uh, did some some build up. What is this stuff from? It's actually it's a Citadel GW product. I generally don't like technical paints. I would rather use glue and flock and things. But it's the Agrelin Badland. Um, I I bought it on kind of a whim. Uh, it was in the discount bin at the the local store, and I was like, you know what? If it works, it works, and it, it is. I, I had just a couple of toothpicks full here on on you know a couple of different bases, and. In, on a desert-style base, uh, one that, generally speaking, uh, come on, <laughs> my paint is not cooperating. Um, on, on generally speaking, a uh, a desert-style base that would normally just be a bunch of uh, a, <laughs> a, a a whole bunch of nothing, just sand. Uh, it, uh, it it breaks up the monotony. It gives up some structure. It gives you some rise and fall in places. I, uh, I I I would I say that it's you know something that everybody and their brother should use. Nah, I, I can't see I can't see why you would. But it is pretty cool. And maybe for instance, uh, for something that uh, you're 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 really just kind of. Kind of wanting the, the, the model to shine, but you don't, you know, you, you don't want it to be, you know, the whole diorama, you know, this giant diorama 
you know, now I do think you could probably use that stuff for like, maybe like, do you like trade, like if you have a, a tank on a base or in a diorama, you could probably use that stuff to, uh, uh, to make like tank tread tracks in the sand. That'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah, no, that might that might be that might be kind of neat. Might be something I'll try in the future. Sorry, let's do a little little blue, uh, uh, little 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 blue dragon. He's starting off. That gonna be that kind of light blue, the same light blue. I'm gonna do the scales here, but I think unlike the dragon, which I'm gonna bring all the way up into the, the white spectrum, I think the little blue fella, the little hatchling, is gonna probably uh, stay stay on the bluer side of things, kind of do that whole, you know, animals in the wild, they, they lighten over time or, or something along those lines. I think that's what we're, that's what we're going to do. Now, what's cool is this is actually the second one of these that I've seen painted. Um, the uh, fantastic uh, dungeon master and uh, a, a fellow professional nerd, uh, Alyssa Fadden, or Faden, I, you know what, I don't know, I don't know how to, I hope I didn't just butcher her name. Alyssa, if you watch this, I hope I didn't butcher your name. Um, she uh, painted uh, painted one, she's like the first one that I saw painted, um, and it looks really, really good. Uh, I hope to do mine as much justice. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's that whole thing of, it's not a competition, you know, we're not trying to like, you know, outdo one another. Honestly, the, the only thing we're really hoping to do, uh, well, I can I can say this for me anyway, uh, is make uh, make money for the charity. Um, she had uh, she had posted hers and put it on this cool little, like little little three like three dimensional or three hundred sixty degree spinner thing. It's pretty cool. I uh, I dig that. Um, if I had one of those, I would probably use it more. Uh, I do not have one of those. But yeah, no. So she did a, a very, a very white, uh, still on the cold side of white. You know, it was it definitely did not have a tan base. It was a, a gray base. Um, but it was a very, very cool, <laughs> cool, a uh, very cool critter. But she had painted hers before she had, as far as I know, gotten the base and the the hashlings. So hopefully. Uh, she doesn't have any trouble doing other, any color matching or making those making those fit the way they're supposed to, because that's that is one thing that I I have always hated is you go and paint something and then like halfway through the project or several weeks after the project's over, uh, the uh, a same client will all, will call me up and be like, hey, um, I need to do. Uh, I need you to do another, like, just a plasma gunner for this squad or something along those lines. And if you don't keep good notes of what, you know, what, what you did with your, uh, with, with the paint schemes, especially if you do a lot of homemade paints or a lot of, uh, uh mixing of hues out on the palette, uh, it's real easy to screw it up. <laughs> so... Uh, hopefully, uh, she'll remember exactly what she did and, and be able to do the, the, the base and the, the dragon at the same time. Uh, alright, so, let's see, what are we doing here? Uh, so this is for Gary Khan, we're talking, <laughs> acting like people tune in and don't watch the beginning. Um, but I had, t I had talked about how, uh, you know, this week's theme is make, make, make hobby time fun, you know, like... I, what I'm doing right here, what, like this, doing this dragon, is not for me. It is, it is for an auction, for, for a show. Um, I could be doing stuff that pays me right now. Um, but I told, uh, I told Luke, uh, Luke Gygax, uh, one of the guys that runs the, the GaryCon, I told him straight away that I, you know, for the last like four or five GaryCons, um, I will always paint one of the uh the charity miniatures um i enjoy getting the opportunity uh he always you know thanks me with either like an extra copy of the model or in this case i'm getting i, I actually wanted one of the uh the adventures over the model 
um, that stars said Thunder, Thunder Frost Dragon. Um, but yeah, like, this is, although it is not for me, it is still something that I take a lot of pride in, and I am still going to consider this, even though it's going to take me a couple of days, um, and I still have other work to get done, I'm still going to c- consider this kind of a fun, this is a, this is a, a fun paint job. Um, because I'm not, I'm, yeah, I'm on a deadline, you know, but it's not a crushing one. It's not, oh dear God, get this done in the next two days. If I want to, I can base coat this and then set it aside, uh, you know, go back to do something else, do Starscream or one of, one of my, one of the other seekers or something, or go over to the computer and do computer work for the, the time being, you know, like there's, there's nothing that says that I have to stick with this other than it needs to be done for Gary Gun. Um, and I want to be able to do a good job, which means I do not want to, uh, I don't want to rush it, but I also, uh, don't want to spend, you know, all of the two weeks trying to make it perfect and then not have it done for the actual show. Um, if the show happens, thank you, stupid virus thing. Um, but either way, uh, it, I, I'm, I, I know I'm preaching that, you know, got to make fun, you got to ha- or have fun with all this. And I think I am, I think that this is going to be a fun, this is going to be a fun kit, especially when I get a chance to get into like the, uh, the hatchlings and get them placed into the diary room itself. This is going to be one of those projects that I think will, uh, when it comes together, it's going to snap. Like it's going to be, you know, Individual pieces are cool, and that's fine, but it's when the final product gets all glued together. I throw the, the I throw the, the the last big glob or last big wash of uh, matte sealer on there to, to seal everything down. As I spit all over the model, uh, and and like I can set it aside and look at it and go, all right, cool, I dig that. And I think that that's, I think this is definitely one of those things, you know, there's always projects, you know, like even, even stuff that you're painting for yourself that you're like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if this is any good, I, I'm not sure if I like this, and then you get to a certain spot, and you're, the wash dries, or you walked away from it to go eat dinner, and you come back afterwards, and the the tone has set into where you wanted it to be, and you're like, okay, that's that's exactly what I want. That's what I wanted to do. Awesome. It all came together like clockwork. And that feeling, that feeling that I that I I personally just adore, is not the done feeling. The done feeling's cool. But the, I'm doing it right. I'm doing I'm doing right by my vision. I'm doing right by my my client's vision. You know, I just showed you that uh, that Cthulhu. I've been working on him for a couple of days now, and the whole time, I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. I don't, you know, like I'm second guessing my uh, my my paint scheme choices. I'm second guessing. Oh God, what you know? Do sh- should I do the extra layer of wash? Should I? you know, highlight these and, and not those, you know, like I had just been doing all kinds of second guessing on that, that guy. And then today, today there was a moment where the right, the right wash dried to the right consistency and it was perfect. It was exactly what I wanted. And I stood back, stood back from it and said, awesome. That this is, this is what I was trying for this is what i was aiming for this is my you know this is this is i i would be i'm happy to show this to the client uh because that's that's i think one of the other things especially if you're painting for someone else is it's way you know especially in the digital age when you know you could have a client ask hey can i have pictures of what you're doing i want to see where i want to see where it's at you almost don't want to show your client pictures in progress 
um, because especially if you've got tricks up your sleeve or washes that you know are going to be applied later on or, or whatever, you might not want to give the give the wrong impression to your uh, to your client. You know, where you, you show them the picture and be like, all right, here you go. And they go, oh, he's awfully brown, isn't he? You could then go through and talk color theory all day long and be like, well, I had to start there because I want to eventually get to a, a bright autumnal orange. And, you know, brown is the gateway for us to make that happen. And unless they understand or they trust your word, then you're going to be second guessing what you've done and the god the last thing you want to do is lose time because you have to strip a model or go back and fix something because the client doesn't understand what you're doing now if you are good enough to to do something with your with your your work and explain it to the client in a way that they go oh okay i'm i'm with you you know, or the client trusts you to, to be like, hey, if you, can I see what's going on? And you go, I don't think you want to see it right now. It's a work in progress. And they go, all right, show me when you can. Just make sure that you still do. <laughs> you know, don't leave them in the dark. Uh, make sure that eventually when something you know, gets to that point, you're like, all right, no, I still want you to... I still want you to, to, to be happy with the paint job and with the conversion or whatever you're doing for them. You know, it's it's nice to check in every once in a while, but it's not maybe necessarily necessary on every single step of the step of the way. And I think painting is a lot like that, especially like that. You know, two days ago, if my client would have said, "Hey, can I see how Cthulhu's doing?" I would have been like, "Well, it is not that far along because I'm going to work on it, you know, later later this week or whatever." and hope that they're okay with it because if he would have saw it two days ago he would have been like i don't think that's going to be done for adepticon because he's going to be using his dust army in the adepticon uh, uh tournament there and it needed to be painted and he's been working much very 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 hard on a uh, golden demon uh thing i don't want to give away but it's huge and he has done an amazing job at it uh, I, I, I am actually, I don't, I don't want to say jealous cause that's not the right word. I'm not jealous of the work that he's done. Um, but I am very proud of what he has managed to accomplish. Uh, you know, it's his first real, real first foray into using an airbrush. It's his first foray into using, uh, or into, uh, uh, kind of these this giant size of a model i mean he's doing a great job and that really falls into the category but you know talk about have fun with your hobby you know he's you're talking about a multi thousand dollar kit plus all the time plus all the hours you can't let something like that turn into a chore you just can't because if not if that's the case you're gonna get halfway done and be like why am i doing this and you're gonna stop and then you're gonna have a multi thousand dollar kit that is sadly just sitting there doing nothing uh half done not looking as good as it could and you know yeah you can always say you got good excuses as to why you didn't get it finished or you know what what was the situation that you know, oh well i ran into a roadblock and i couldn't get a, couldn't get out of it yeah you could say those things or you can just focus and get the project done and then marvel at how awesome it is. And that's where we're at right now. His, like, I I really hope that Adepticon happens for him um, just because he has put so much heart and soul into this project that I, I hope... I hope that it is a staggering victory for him, and he gets a golden demon. I've never gotten a golden demon before. Um, I, I, I will, I will not be jealous. I will be happy for him. I will be proud of him, and hopefully, 
he will, you know, take that uh, uh, take that feeling and put it right back into the next big project. You know, who knows? Um, but yeah, like so, he's been spending almost all of his waking time working on that project, uh, which again. Thankfully, every time I talk to him, uh, with one exception, uh, every time I've talked to him about it, he has been super happy about the the uh, uh, the the project. He's been happy with how, with how it's going. He's been happy with uh, you know what what is you know what is the uh, uh, the current state of things. You know, he's just been generally very very positive about it, and I think that that helps a great deal. You know, if it, you you don't want like like the like my shirt says, uh, quoting Mr. Dave Taylor, you can't let your your hobby, you can't let your painting become a chore. You know, you because then, you know, especially you know, yeah, if you're painting for yourself and you make it a chore, then you're really only hurting yourself. But if you're painting for clients, and you are like, you know, oh God, I really don't want to paint this and paint this stuff anymore. It's gonna reflect. You're gonna start cutting corners. You're gonna start being a you know. Do you need to do that last you know black ink between the toes? Mm, nah, it had black primer. You know, like you can you, you can justify your behavior with a model that you don't care for that is a chore uh, quite a bit. You know, over and over and over again. Um, and I think that. Uh, uh, I think that if you have fun with it, then even like a big, a big giant, you know, multi, you know, multi-day project like Cthulhu there um, can be super fun. And I know I'm having a blast. Even just, you know, yeah, I'm just base coating, but knowing where I want to take this critter, where I want to take this frost, this uh, th- thunder frost dragon. I'm already kind of jazzed uh, about what it's gonna be, um, and I and I hope <laughs> I, I hope that uh, the end result is uh, as good as I am picturing in my head, <laughs> uh, and that I have enough time in the next two weeks to to do that uh, in the way that I want to. Uh, you know, combined with my uh, my other my other projects and you know family life and all that stuff, because that's just that's just how it is. <laughs> so uh, I know I'm getting a little a little short on time here um, because I've got to go pick up my kids from school soon. Um, again, so, you know, painting painting is fun, not a chore. In the, in, in this instance. Getting my kids is also not a chore. Keep telling myself that. Um, normally, Natalie would be going to fetch the kids, but she got a new job. Um, we were at my accountant's, uh, my accountant's place, and uh, you know, funny as it is, my accountant was uh, just scatterbrained and having such a. She was all over the place and having a hard time keeping things together and. Apparently a client came in and was yelling at her about, you know, I need my my paperwork and, you know, it's takes too long for you to find stuff here. And she was just basically having a having a day of it. And Natalie asked, you know, hey, do you need help here? And my accountant had just fired her helper, which is why she was having such a bad day. So she hired Natalie to uh, to help around the office and uh, learn you know tax software and, and all that stuff and because it's a desk gig uh, if Natalie isn't feeling well that day she can take it you know take it a little easier she can slow down uh, you know it, it's on the way to our kids schools uh, timing wise it's just about perfect for when they, when she needs to be in there Uh no, it's uh, I'm. I hope it sounds like it's going to be a good fit. It's only her second day, but because she has to be in there at the time when the kids need to get picked up for school, guess who gets to interrupt his work day? This guy. 
So I got to take a, a breather from work for a couple of hours, go chase the kids around, take them to their various, uh, their various things, after school activities and the like. Um, but I will say this, it does give me an opportunity to pop by the game store. I am out of a couple of paints from last night that, uh, while I don't need them for this project, I will need them soon. Um, and there is nothing worse than being mid project. Like you're right, you're getting ready to, to, to go into the next step of things and you look down and go, wait, I don't have enough of this. No. Or, you know, what could be worse than that is you do start a phase of something and not realize that you're out of a particular thing and you get about halfway. And then halfway you're like, well, I'm going to have to stop, which for painting's sake means that you're going to have that weird tan line looking thing where you you can tell that your painting finished in that position. Oh yeah. Now there's, there's, it's, it's never, it's never any fun uh, to do it that way. So I, uh, Uh, I see it. I see it happening. Uh, it, it, and I saw it happening last night, so I stopped and I put those bottles aside and was like, okay, this is what we're going to do tomorrow when I pick up the kids. I'm right there next to the shop. We're going to take a quick a quick stroll inside the, uh, the old shop and grab the paints that I need and then come back and finish up my work day. But yeah, so, like, like, again, I know I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but uh, part of it is, you know, uh, part of the way that I make my my hobby time into fun time is I really do super enjoy uh, just talking while I'm painting. I, I kind of wish, uh, I know that there's a few, uh, uh, there are a few places online that uh, are like, you know, set up hobby chat rooms and stuff like that. I'm going to have to be careful here, grab them by the wing. Uh, you know, chat rooms and hobby places to uh, uh, to kind of like create Google areas, you know, G Google Google chats while you're painting and hobby rooms. and uh, But I, I, I don't get a chance to do that very often because, again, I might only paint for 20 minutes at a time and then go and work on a, a, a war game for you know, or, or a rule book, or write a write a D and D module for the, the next three hours, and then I have to go back and cut, you know, go back and forth between the different sections of my studio. Uh, it, it doesn't condone well to taking twenty minutes to set up a Google chat area and inviting people and making sure that everybody's. You know, are you lagging? I can't tell it. I sound like you're lagging. Are you lagging? I'm lagging. You know, like it just, I, I wish I could do that more often. You know, I know for a while there I wanted to set them up, at, you know, after hours and, and that sort of thing. But even then, I just, I just never really, you know, there's so much setup. It's not the same as just, you know, chatting with, chatting with a friend or having a, you know, back in the day we used to have all night paint nights you know, where you paint until the sun comes up, and I miss those days, and that's kind of what, what, what this, what, what I'm doing now, kind of scratches a little bit of that itch, knowing that I'm talking to, uh, at this point, hundreds of people. Eventually, I would love it to be thousands or, or more, um, but I, I don't think that I'm necessarily popular enough to, uh, to warrant that just yet. Um, you know, something cool has to happen for that to, to, to occur. Uh, but knowing that I'm, you know, having, telling my stories and, you know, talking about, you know, different paint theories and, you know, oh, this model does this and, you know, talking about the narrative in some cases, uh, you know, this, this, this does scratch that itch for me. This does help me, uh, uh feel like I'm making progress on a model, but also, being a social butterfly, which is what I have always wanted to do and be, you know, that, that, that will never change. Um, 
You know, I, I am definitely not an introvert. You know, yeah, I've got my times where I want to be left alone by myself and run errands on my, on my own with no kids, no no wife, no nothing. You know, I, I have my alone time scheduled in my brain that this has to happen for me and, and only for me. But at the end of the day, I am a very social creature. And getting to, getting to sit here and talk to you guys while I'm painting, um, it makes such a huge difference. Uh, it, it, you know, it really is uh, what turns my, uh, uh, what, what, what turns some of my job into a, 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 a into a joy, into into a fun thing, and you know, like like I've been trying to kind of focus on with this, uh, with this episode is anything that you can do to make your hobby or your job or your painting or your gaming or your designing monsters or whatever you do what if you can if you can find a way to make it more enjoyable more of a uh, a fun thing rather than oh man I have to get you know this has to happen every day uh, you will you'll live longer. You know, like your your stress levels will go down. You like it, this is you know. I, I got in a conversation with my wife the other day uh, about how painting, generally speaking, is one of my ways I de stress. And she's like, yeah, but you have so much painting that you do for other people. Doesn't that stress you out with the deadlines and stuff? And she's right to a certain degree, but only if I let it get that way. You know, if I if I view this as I getting to paint this Thunder Frost Dragon for free for someone to enjoy in the in you know in the future and be able to show their friends or run that adventure and you know like this was this is something that they will that they'll have forever you know and hopefully they'll remember who painted it <laughs> uh, and you know they'll they'll look me up in the future and go hey I've got one of your paint jobs you know we love it we love it around the table you know it's we've used it in a couple of games or, or whatever and I think that that could be um, uh, that that's that's one of the things that drives me that what makes me that what makes me go into uh, into that mode um, you know I I just I really dig. Uh, I dig knowing that someone's going to get to look at this and hopefully, you know, yeah, stroke my ego a little bit. Ooh, ah. But overall, I'm more pleased with the fact that I've left an impression on someone. My my art, my creation, my, my talents have left an impression on somebody. And hopefully they will then pass it on to someone else and so forth and so on. Uh, all right, so I've got to get moving uh, so let's go ahead and pop back over to the uh, the other part of the studio and uh, and wrap up for the day. Thanks for hanging out with me uh, and getting a good solid base coat on my Thunder Frost Dragon. All right, see you in a minute. All right, so that was fun. I know we didn't get to get as much done as possible because again, it is for it is a piece for charity for an auction. So I do want to take my time and make it so it uh, uh, it sells for more <laughs> if the auction happens if the, if a convention happens if anything happens uh either way all these things put aside hopefully you listen to my stories and you realize that um really the the goal of all of this is for people to have fun to enjoy themselves to take to take that breath just 10 percent deeper and enjoy your life enjoy the extra parts of your life and realize at the end of the day, uh, if you are trying to get things done but still smile, you're stepping on the right path. You're trying the you're you're trying to go down the right way. Stay positive, you know. And one of the things that you can do in that spare time to make things better for you is get out there, enjoy yourselves. Find find whatever it makes to, whatever it takes to make your heart sing, and play some games. See you next week. <laughs>